Good morning, wherever you are in the world. Good afternoon or good evening. It's always good to be with you. And as always, it's good to be with my very good friends, Mohammed Shukri in Bahrain and Phoebe Francis in Dubai. How are you, gentlemen? Very, Hi. very well. <laughs> Go ahead, Mohammed. Yeah. Hi from Bahrain, everyone. And uh, good to see you again. Yeah, good. You're doing well, Phoebe? Yeah, warm, warm regards from Dubai to ours. Thank you. Very good. So this week, as I had said at the end of our conversation last week, I suggested we talk about vision and the power of the vision for leaders. So what are you? What, what comes to your mind when I use the word vision? Muhammad? Uh, of course, we see this everywhere. It's in the on the websites, on companies' uh, pages. We see it in our corridors when we move into the headquarter offices. It's printed everywhere, and everybody talks about vision. But really, what do we exactly mean uh, about vision? And people reading the word vision have different versions of the word vision. Yeah. Bibi, how what comes to your mind when I say vision? Yeah, the immediate image which comes to my mind is the Dubai Museum, you know, the which have a shape of an eye. Yes. In in my perspective, it have uh, it, it is very very nice and you, you know it, it is an example of vision where where we can take um, um, take. Us as individuals, as a family, as an organization, as a country, where we can take us together and showing what kind of uh, changes that that may bring to all of us. So the positive aspects of change and um, and something to aspire for. That is what I see from the vision perspective. Okay. So let's just back a little bit, take back a little bit. Vision, of course, in English, the word vision is, means something that we see. We yeah. see something. This is my vision. It's a picture that I see. So the vision can be real. I'm looking, so my vision is here. It's clear, and this is what it is. But if I look beyond the now, if I look beyond the present moment, I can imagine, by the word imagine, there's two words there, imagine. And this is image in. The word imagine is image in. We're imagining something, so we're seeing an image in our mind. We're imagined Beautiful. in, image in. And so that's quite often what the vision, it's a vision of something. And somewhat, you know, we might have a vision of, of climbing the mountain, or we might have a vision of finishing our exam successfully. We might have a vision of um, a young couple achieving something fantastic. So why do we use the word vision in the organisational sense? This company, because Mahmoud, you just said in the corridors of organisations and on the websites, and that you can see the word vision. Our vision is so. What? Why do they have a vision? Yeah, because the organisations, of course, were not uh, built or created to do something just for today or to be there for a month. They are planning to be there for ages, and they have to have a vision of what the future looks like. Uh, and the better future looks like, otherwise they will not work for it. So that uh, would be a simple, straightforward answer. Yeah, so it's a picture, we could say, an image of what the future would look like. Yes, for that organisation. Yes. We, but we can say, hang on, we, we haven't been to the future. How can we have a picture of the future when we haven't been there? Well... We can imagine, this is the image in, and we can create in our minds the image of where we're going to go. So, but why is it important, and it is, for leaders to have vision? I think, Graham, one aspect which is coming to my mind is, you know, uh, when, when, when you believe strongly on something, 
uh, you have the ability to draw a picture which you can also show to the people who are with you. One example I, I, I see from our example, like when we are assembling as the Leadership Challenge Middle East, yep. what way we can we can move forward and help more people in the yeah. capability building of leadership behaviors is the vision which you have helped us, myself and Mohammed, to envision, to drive. And that motivates us to be here together to work on. Uh, so that yeah. is that that is an example which which is coming to my mind that the, the, there is a strong belief which you shape us you highlight us you show us and we are attracted towards that that is a simple example coming to my well, mind okay let me pick up on that before i come back to you muhammad this is really very good so thank you phoebe not that i wanted you to talk about the vision that i create have i created for this channel but the example that you gave is very clear in the reason why a leader should create or should have a vision. Because what he does when he creates an image of the future that he shares with others and others feel part of that vision, then they will want to commit to helping the team get to that result, to climb the mountain together. So... Yeah, it, it's, it brings others in to this so that they feel very much a part of it. And that's what's important in the leadership challenge with, with the second of the two, the five practices of exemplary leadership. Number two is inspire a shared vision. As you know, the important word there is shared. And by that, we mean that all the people who I'm sharing this vision with in my team will feel part of this vision. It's not a just me saying, this is what I am going to do. But when I create a vision that is shared, then other people who are part of getting it will feel absolutely wet. That's what we're going to do. And they will want to, as I said, be motivated to climb the mountain with me. Let me just share a couple of examples of, about this with leaders that I've been working with. Um, I remember some years ago, a, a gentleman who was running a number of um, family companies uh, and quite, really quite successfully and we talked about the vision and I said so what is your vision and he said well and now I, I I did say your vision so that may have led him down the path of making it a little bit personal but he said my vision is that my family will have a healthy happy and wonderful spiritual life and that I can provide wonderful things for them basically that was it and I said, well, that's really good, but I'm not going to get up early in the morning and come in and help you achieve that. Why? Because it was about what he wanted for himself. Right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong. So I asked him to think about taking the team with him so that they feel inspired to do this. Now, I'll give you another example of this. This is a gentleman... Actually, he was in, in um, Oman. I was coaching him again about five or six years ago. And he was a kind of, it, was, it wasn't a large company, it wasn't a huge company, but uh, he was at probably at the at second level from the top. And he said, I'm, I really am unmotivated. He said, I, I can't inspire my team as to what we're going to do and where we're going. And I, I just, I'm lost. And he used that word. And I said, but where are you where are you going? I don't know, he said. I said, but what about the vision that the company has? I don't know, he said. I said, really? Does your managing director or CEO have a vision? Well, I, I don't know. Again, he said. I said, well, what do you need to do about this? And he gave me the right answer. He said, I need to talk to him. Sounds good to me. So the next time we spoke. I said, so tell me what happened. Well, he said, I went to my managing director and I said, I'm I'm lost. I don't know what's going on. I'm demotivated and I can't share the team with what's happening and where we're going. He said, do you have a vision for where we are going? And the managing director smiled and said, yes, I do. And he then opened what may have been his top drawer, but it could have been the bottom one. 
And he reached in and he pulled out. See, here it is. I have the vision. And he shared it with this gentleman who then said to me, wow, I was able to come back and tell my team this and they are now feeling much more motivated in understanding where we're going. So here there's a good aspect to this and there's a negative aspect. The good part is he asked his managing director, did he have a vision? The negative part was he shouldn't have had to have asked the managing director and the managing director shouldn't have had it in his drawer. That's not where you put a vision. You talk about the vision. You talk about where we're going. You talk about what it's going to be like when we get there. You are never going to motivate people if you've got your vision, no matter how eloquent it is and how visual it is, if it's in your drawer. So create a vision for the future and share that with the people you are leading so that they know that they are part of this and they want to help you achieve this. They want everybody on the team to be able to achieve this outcome, this wonderful vision, because it's good for all of us. It's a shared vision. Mohammed, what do you feel about this? Yeah, um, what came to my mind is a metaphor of a ship captain. Yeah. Uh, if we uh, look uh, to the old uh, image that uh, he, uh, the ship captain goes on the dock and he and he looks at the uh, horizon and he, he sees something, okay? And he, according to what he sees, he gives his orders to the crew, which blindly, let me use that word, will follow the orders, all right? Uh, one good thing about this example is the leader must know where we are going. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And everyone else on the ship is trusting him. Uh, the, the, the negative part is that do they really know where they are going which they don't they just trust the captain and the leadership challenge uh, second uh, you know a practice uh, inspire a shared vision how much of what you see do others see yes. and I think you tapped on that beautifully uh, so it's not enough for the leader to know where we are going but others also to know also where we are going yeah and if if we just if those people just know that they are doing that job that they have today and tomorrow they come back and do that job tomorrow this is tedium this is boring this is repetitive this is not in any way inspiring or fulfilling for them however if they know what the likely outcome of what they're doing is going to be where we are going what does this then feed into, which inspires people to even more? It feeds into purpose. They know what they are doing is leading to an outcome. And when they know that what they're doing is leading to an outcome, they're going to be more committed to wanting to achieve that outcome. So let me follow up that analogy that you gave about the, the ship's captain, which is very good and very clear. If the captain says, this is where we're going, and, and we are going to the Americas, that's our destination, but he's giving them the daily report on where it is, they know the outcome that what they're doing now is leading them to the Americas or wherever, right? But he's not just got them on that ship looking through his binoculars and saying, yes, okay, straight ahead. Okay, now turn right. No, to No. They know because of what he's communicated to them where they are going. Now, in this instance, that I, this perfect analogy that you brought in here, we could also say that if we don't know these gentlemen on the ship wouldn't know what the Americas looked like. No, they wouldn't know what because they've never been there. And I'm just mm. using that as an, an example. But people can say, well, I don't know what the future is like. I've never been there. Okay. You might say to people, have you, for example, have you ever been to Paris? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, what would what comes to your mind when I say Paris? What comes to most people's mind if I say Paris? Tell me. 
Eiffel Tower? The Eiffel Tower. Yeah, Eiffel Tower. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're with me. <laughs> but but I, <laughs> they haven't been there. But in this case, they know that that's they can see the picture of the Eiffel Tower. I haven't been there, but they can see what that is. And that's what we can do when we say to people what we are going to do in climbing this mountain, in achieving this outcome, or sailing to the Americas, or going to, to Paris, that we can create an image that they, that they see and believe is real because it's going to happen. And, of course, if we get down to the level of quantum physics and the ideas of, of the subconscious and how the subconscious works, some of us would say that what we create in the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind takes us there, but that's going down another little path. But we, if we believe enough and that we talk about the future, leaders should talk about the future. They should be saying, this is where we're going. What you are doing is contributing to the journey that we are on to get to that outcome. And people feel inspired, I hope, gentlemen, to want to achieve that. Phoebe? Yeah, Graham. So I I I, I like that uh, uh, analogy of uh, captain of ship. So I bring the context here again. Here we are three. You are the captain of the ship. You came with the idea of having a YouTube channel for the Middle East. So that is the vision setting. You know that is the vision setting, and and uh, the way in which we assemble together to share our thoughts, ideas, so that the purpose of enabling others in this process, including me as well as my mother. And, and that is another aspect of vision setting. And, and, and uh, you know, for example, the first subscriber for the channel, the second subscriber, then uh, over a period of 10,000 views, 20,000 views. So today, just before we checked in, I checked, it is already 70,000 views. And when, when, when we see the improvement of the way in which we are able to touch on different lives. Yeah. That is but, the satisfaction uh, to look. us. So, uh, acting and, uh, you know, so seeing that I get motivated to uh, put on more efforts to the small videos. We all work on those things. So I think that is a perfect example, which uh, Mohammed mentioned about uh, as a captain setting a vision. And, and sometimes I think and I see, okay, we can be uh, moving into uh, 100,000 or 1 million views over a period yeah, of time. Yeah. So yeah, Okay, okay. Now, let me just pick up on this because I, I wasn't think, thinking of this at all. But but your example of this, the leadership, the, the leadership Challenge Middle East and what we are doing and what I had projected for you. Remember last week I sent, I'm looking at the now, I sent you a message saying, Onwards to a hundred thousand, right? Yeah. And I, some, some one stage earlier, I talked about the objective of five hundred thousand. I'm, yeah. I will say this to you that I didn't say to myself, isn't it time that I motivated these guys by talking about milestones? This just came to me to think we've got to move on, we're going to that hundred thousand, then we're going to go to five hundred thousand. And this is always a path for leaders to help others that they are leading to move onwards with the, what they're doing to get to that outcome and to be talking about yeah. the future, to be talking about what it's going to be like. Did I set a plan to say 100 and then 500? No, I didn't. I just do it. I just do it automatically because that's what we should be doing. We should be sharing with people that we're, we're leading what the future is going to be like. We should be sharing with them what we can do to get there. And having, having those people feel, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, yeah, come on, let's do it. So, Muhammad, yeah. you're looking yeah. for uh, I want to flip the vision equation here. And now, although uh, we know that the captain sees, uh, you know, the destination, Americas, Paris, wherever, right? And sharing the vision with them is helpful. But also the people on board of that ship they also have their own uh, separate individual visions of why they joined uh, this crew. Uh, every person has a reason why to be there, otherwise they wouldn't be there. And their reasons might not be identical with the bigger vision of the captain of where we are going. So it's very important for the captain also to learn about his crew 
what do they aspire for uh, when they joined this ship? Yep. What do they look for? What do they want to achieve in their lives? Because once he does that, he can make that vision. Now I can see the word shared vision. So you want to be um, a supervisor in the future, all right? Okay, good. And you also want to study about you know, uh, oversee something. Very good. So if I know what you are here, why you are here for, the, the vision actually will make more sense and I will enlist you in the big vision. So this is an important part that the captain also must know what's the vision of their individuals, uh, individual uh, constituents. Yeah, now that's really good. And let me, let me drill this down a little bit more specifically. But I'm, I'm extending what you have said. So if the manager, the captain, has defined his vision for where we're going and has the people that he's leading excited about that, and then, as you said, he can say to them, so what do you want to achieve? He might also say, what is it that, what is it that drives you? Why do you come here? Oh, well, I, be, I come here because of the achievement. I come here because of uh, I, I enjoy working with the team. I, I come here because I, I, I want to earn more money. I, I come here because I want to better myself. Whatever. Whatever that driver within is in, they indicate. As the leader, I'm going to say, well, guess what? I'm going to help you make that happen. Really? Yep. I'm going to help you make that happen. You say you want you want a promotion in the next six months. Let's work to that. Because what you do will help us achieve the overall goal. So I'm going to help you achieve that. And you, you, you enjoy working in the team. I'm going to show you how to be even more effective working in the team to help us all get to that ultimate goal. You say that you want more money <laughs> or more pay, whatever. I'm going to help you achieve that. You tell me what you want and I'm going to help you achieve it. No, I'm not going to write you a check. I'm not going to give you a promotion. I'm going to help you do the things that you need to do so that people recognize that you are entitled to this and that you achieve it. And then as a result of all of this, guess what? We are going to achieve that vision for everybody, that overall vision for the team or for the organization, for the country. So achieving that vision, Mohammed, is it's really good that you highlighted the individual's contributions and what they actually want for themselves. And we always say it's a shared vision. Sure, that's important. But if I, as a leader, because of last week, remember we talked about relationships, if I, if my relationship then goes to the point where I find out, and I should, what their drivers are, why do you come to work? What do you want to get out of this? They may say, I just want us to achieve that vision. Great. What else? What is it for you that you want? Oh, well, no, nothing, just to be recognised for my contribution. I'll make sure that absolutely you get, not by punching you, but I'll make sure absolutely that you that you receive that. What am I doing as a leader? I'm motivating individuals. Now, I, I've, I've long said you cannot motivate a team. Do you agree with me? I have a perspective. You know, when you said that, Graham, you know, uh, the, as 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 a person who is showing that vision, that emotional connection with the team is key. You you yeah. highlighted that. How can yeah. we, and and how can I weave that along with that team's aspirations? Yeah, sure. And what what matters most to the team members, and that leads them to take actions, which which leads to the change, and. and what stories are we telling? One example I, 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 that comes to my mind recently when I was watching Star Trek with my son was related to, you know, the way in which the, the, the movie envisions. Yeah. Now I am seeing Elon Musk <laughs> making reusable rockets. <laughs> yeah. And, and transporting goods from the earth to uh, the space. So the way in which things shape when when there is vision and people coming out with new ideas to do that. So as you, I'm going to come back to the team motivating in a moment, but you're talking about Elon Musk now, who had a vision, right? Several visions, yeah. certainly about electric motor vehicles and certainly flying to Mars and so on. 
let's just 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 go back a little bit. Who else? Prominent vision. Let's say Nelson Mandela. Did he have a vision? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And people wanted they they wanted that vision that he talked about. And the the most successful leaders that we can associate with are those that have had visions that we have connected to and want to be part of that. So I'm coming back to my comment that sometimes is a little controversial, I guess, when I say that you cannot motivate a team. And one of the cliches, there are many cliches in the training business, as you would know, uh, and I think I've mentioned this particular one before that says, um, uh, if you're in customer service, treat the customer the way you would like to be treated. No, don't treat the customer the way they would like to be treated. Um, I think I used the example when we spoke about this last time. That if I'm treating, if I'm giving customer service to a sheikh, um, he doesn't want to be treated the way I like to be treated. I'm sure he wants to be treated the way a sheikh should be treated, and I'm going to do that. So the other one of the other cliches in training is that there is no I in team. No, in the English language, T E A M is how we spell it. There's no letter I in there. But every team is made up of I individuals. Every team is made up of individuals. Every team, every individual has a reason for being on that team. Every individual has their own drivers for success. Every individual has their own behavioral standards and so on. So it's a, it's a, for the leader to have a relationship with their team. Individually, he doesn't have a relationship with a group. He has a relationship with all of the team members individually. And when he does that, as we talked last week, he's then able to find out things about that individual that will inspire that individual. So we're then going to get great results. And if the overarching part of the inspiration is the vision that he has for the team and for the outcome, then we're going to get great success. So it's <clears throat> the leader should have a vision of where we're going and that it, we are all going to benefit from this. And then he understands how each person has their own little motivator, their own little driver, and he feeds that. And we then get some great results. Uh, there is a very good example. Actually, we all go through daily, almost daily basis. The group commute or even, you know, the uh, trips on um, on, on buses, trains, and on. So would you pick a train uh, trip or, uh, um, what? let me say this, uh, or a, a flight that yeah. doesn't take you where you want to go? You won't. You no, only yeah. pick the flight that takes you to your destination. But when you're on the flight, you're not alone. There is a whole bunch of passengers who with them you share the destination at least for a for some time so sure. if that plane is not taking me where i want to go i'm sorry i'm not with you now i don't want to be there how yeah imagine if the employees are ignored in terms of where they want to go yes maybe they are already on the payroll but do you really know where they want to go? Do they really want to go where you want to go? Yes. They will only stay there as long as you achieve their, their goals. Otherwise, they are looking for another bus. They are looking for another flight. But the other part, so as as the, but the other part of this in, in understanding for them what's important is to help them understand purpose. And sometimes mm. people find difficulty in connecting to their purpose. And, and when they do understand their purpose, we can connect them to their own vision and the bigger vision for the for the team and the organisation. I'll give you a simple example. When I'm when I'm dealing with, um, let's say, people in the finance department of an organisation, and I'll say to to someone, maybe at a junior level in the finance department, what's your purpose? What do you do here? oh, I just collect this or I just do that. And they're talking about a fairly basic, simple level of procedures. And I'll say, no, you don't just do that. What you do, what you do, along with everybody in the finance department, contributes to the decisions that the board will make about the future of the organisation. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. 
Now, the older mm. story, which has been debunked many times, was of the, the late President John F. Kennedy when he was had said that we're going to put a man on the moon, and some little while later he was he was touring one of the uh, NASA centers, and uh, as he was being shown around this center, he came to a, came across a man who was sweeping the floor. This has been proven to be a little bit of a, a bit of a crazy story made up by someone, but the analogy I think still applies. And President Kennedy said to this man who was sweeping the floor, "What are you doing here?" Here, and this man man's reply was, "I'm helping to put a man on the moon." Even at that level of sweeping the floors, his contribution is relating to putting a man on the moon. So when people understand that they're not just sweeping the floor, they're not just doing this, but what they're doing overall has real purpose. Some people, when you ask them, what's your purpose here? They have an immediate answer. I've, I've used this example before. If I was to go to the emergency ward of a hospital and say to the doctors or any of the staff there, what's your purpose? Without any thought, really, they would say to save lives, right? Simple. That's why they're there in the emergency department, for to save lives and it help the people who are in, in, injured in, in the best way they can. So they clearly understand their purpose. And when we can talk to people who we are leading about their purpose and how that purpose fits into the vision of where we are going, then they become motivated and want to be there. You know, I use you take take up your take up your example of being on a flight somewhere. If you said to a flight attendant, "What's your purpose?" She's helping everybody have a safe and enjoyable flight to their destination. She's in fact helping the captain do his job in a funny kind of way, because we want to all get there and feel happy. So, helping people to understand their purpose is important. Understanding what their drivers are as well and what they want to achieve is important. And then talking to them about the future and where we're going. It's a bright future. And I've got to say, apart from some things that are happening around the world at this moment, which are not always exciting, it is a bit bright future if we all work together to achieve that. Phoebe, we're going to wrap this up. What's your final word? <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, it is interesting to be here with all of you. So what, what, what I'm taking away in, from this conversation is Vision is an image in mind which we use to create a picture yeah. through the words which we use. Yes. So that we get the buy-in of other members in our team. Absolutely. Well and done. I think, uh, I, I think um, the storytelling part of vision creation is a critical competency which we have to develop as, as, as leaders to tell stories that influence and that shifts the mind now as you talk about storytellers we have in this room at the moment one of the most eminent storytellers in the arabic world and that is not me <laughs> but it is it is our dear friend muhammad shukri for whom storytelling is a part of his way of life and soon i'm going to focus on muhammad talking to him about the importance and the value of stories okay muhammad done done, done. Done. Now I'm just going to say thank you. Do you have a final word, Muhammad, before I wrap this up? Because I know you've got to move somewhere and so do we all. Yeah, where I'm going to move, by the way, let me share this. Sure. Uh, we are embarking on a training project where I have to outsource a number of facilitators because it's a long project. And uh, contrary to me running a training, this time me and a number of facilitators running the training, this is what I do at the beginning of the session. Tell me what is your objective of being with us? Yeah, and they're but... like, what? You mean other than the hourly payment? And yeah, why are you here with, with me uh, doing this? So list your objectives. I learn them and we, I, we tell them that it's not only serving the client and tr training project, but also serving serving your objectives. And this is where I'm going Very to good. do uh, in, in a couple of hours. Very good. Thank you. Very good Thank approach you. that you are taking, essential. And, and so many people in your situation wouldn't do that. I thank you for being with us, you two wonderful gentlemen, and also the people who are listening to us and watching us today. 
Next week when we are together, I am going to suggest we talk about, again, another one of my favourite topics, and that is empowerment and the best leaders empower. So shall we be empowered next week when we are talking? I hope so. Thank you both for being with us to get to, with me today, gentlemen. It's always a pleasure, and I value your insights in this journey that we are on, and I wish you all a great week, and we'll be back again next week. See you soon. See you Bye soon. Now. Thank you.